minutes. Yeah, you got it right. We are going to enter into what is one of the most beautiful of spiritual experiences. So I invite you to join us, and I think your heart will be tickled with the beautiful music we have. It certainly touched me in depth. I believe it will you too. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please stand and join us in singing together. This song was chosen because the message is so relevant to two events coming this month. Unity's World Day of Prayer and the International Day of Peace. So please join us. Together we can all stand tall. Together none of us will fall. And we can heal the world when we're together. Together war and hate will cease. Together peace and love increase. Then we can all be free when we're together. Nothing is impossible. All things are possible for you and me when we're together. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. 
possible. All things are possible for you and me. When we're together, together we can build a world where everyone is understood. Then we are truly one when we're together. Together we will bring the light to brighten up the darkest night. Then we will walk in love when we're together. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. All things are possible for you and me. When we're together, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. All things are possible for you and me. When we're together, together we will find a cure to make all nations feel secure. And we will stand in peace when we're together. Together love will find a way to lead us to a brighter day. And we'll go hand in hand when we're together. Ready now. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible, all things are possible for you and me, when we're together. One more time. Everything is possible, nothing is impossible, all things are possible for you and me, when we're together. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Beth Botorf Seiden Spinner. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Unity of Walnut Creek. Let's take a moment to check our cell phones. And as we do, please join me in waving hello to our online friends. Your presence adds to our spiritual community, and we truly appreciate you joining us this morning. What a blessing to have with us as a musical guest, Harmony. Yeah. <laughs> So let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's continue by reading aloud the statement of our unity. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at depth. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. And now Jack Schaefer will read Unity's Daily Word. 
The word for today is unstoppable. I have hidden stores of power and energy deep within me. When I face an obstacle, I reach inward to access the divine power of God that supplies my every need. Like the wind which can blow with great power and force, yet remain unseen, the energy in me may not be visible, yet it is strong, vibrant, and ever-present. Through the power of God within, I am capable of accomplishing great things. As I learn to rely on this power, I unleash my full potential. I am eternally connected with my power source. It is divine. It is the energy of the universe. And it is unstoppable. I am this divine energy, and I cannot fail. From the scripture, Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. The affirmation for today. I am divine energy and I am unstoppable. Would you say that with me, please? I am divine energy and I am unstoppable. Now one more time and believe it, really believe it. I am divine energy and I am unstoppable.
What a lovely way to transition to birthday Sunday. <laughs> if you're born in September, we invite you to stand and let your light shine so that we can celebrate you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. We have many exciting classes, workshops, and healing events happening this month. Next Sunday, join Koi Cross for a workshop based on the teachings of Unity Minister Reverend Carol Ruth Knox, entitled, I Accept My Life As It Is. Unity World Day of Prayer is on the second Thursday of the month. Join us for an interfaith service with powerful music. Our Volunteer Appreciation Day Ice Cream Social is the second Saturday of the month. We'll have games, prizes, and lots of fun. Experience Sheila's powerful, radical forgiveness two-hour introductory workshop on the 22nd of this month. This work has transformed thousands of people worldwide. For, to find out more about these and other activities, you can look in the bulletin and on our website. So if you're here with us for the first time, we welcome you to our spiritual community. We would love to meet you and invite you to experience a community event as a guest at an event of your choosing. Please take the very important presence card from the seat pocket in front of you to the welcome table out on the patio to learn more about us and to receive your gift certificate. So if you are willing, Please raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. We'd like to extend a special blessing to you. If you are here for the first time, great. So together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Welcome. Please, <laughs> let's take a moment to enjoy each other until the music begins. You see pretty good. They're pretty beautiful. <laughs> okay, take those deep breaths, wiggle around, get comfortable. <sighs> Just let the morning go, settle back in as we prepare for that beautiful journey into prayer and meditation together. Again, take another breath through your heart.
let it go. And as you listen to the music, let this exquisite chant from ancient time guide you to the very center of your heart. Beloved Presence, as we turn within, awaken us to know you more completely. Call us to our oneness. infinite love. We awaken to know the beauty of your presence. To remember it touching us as morning sunlight. The amazing beauty of trees and grass. The exquisite blue of the sky. The music of the voices we heard. the connection we felt with others. And the beauty of the inner peace that we seek. We know your presence as this amazing love that fills our lives, renewing every cell, connecting us heart to heart with these special beings of light that you have drawn into our lives as family and friends, as people we work with or those that we pass and suddenly recognize as a presence of blessing. Beloved presence, as you flow through us, as you express as us, we now enter into our awareness that there is only you. You are friend. 
your flower. You are daylight and nighttime. You are the beautiful activity of mind. And you are the deep, deep quiet within. And we let that quiet call to us now. Stillness of mind. Serenity of heart as we enter into this place of simply being one with the one, the sacred place of stillness, guided by the words of the Master, peace, be still, peace, be still. Mother, Father, God, infinite love, beloved presence, I am grateful. I am grateful to know your presence as this beautiful feeling of love that we experience upon our heart. Grateful for the power to send it forth to heal and bless and uplift. Grateful to know that in all transformation we are one. And so we make this choice to radiate this love, to send it forth from our hearts. First to our own bodies for healing and well-being to mind and heart for wisdom and understanding. We radiate this love and we 
enfold each one dear to us. Blessing, lifting, healing, guiding, prospering, and bringing peace. We send this love from our hearts across this spiritual community, becoming a part of the light and wisdom that flows through each one, blessing everyone in their world. We enfold every prayer request brought here, knowing with each that this love lifts them into that which is their very highest. We radiate this love from our hearts. We send it across these communities in which we live, blessing all people. We send it across our nation, healing our fears and bringing forth our great wisdom and compassion. We send it across the nations of the world, calling forth the desire for peace in all hearts. And we radiate this love. We send it to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we radiate this love from our hearts. We send it to this beautiful earth, to all her creatures, bringing a harmony into all that unfolds upon her. And we radiate this love about the earth to touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Celebrating that blessing once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. It is so. Amen.
Everybody feel loved? Yeah. Woo! yeah. <laughs> I have to share with you, I had a fascinating week. There was a, a new book came out. Somebody said, yeah, this is pretty good. You've got to check it out. So, so I got the book, and it was uh, a, a wonderful researcher looking back into the uh, history all around Jesus and you know, trying to find the historical Jesus. And it was kind of fun to me because um, I had been reading another fabulous researcher who had really just gone through and looked for the same thing. And they came up through this tremendous effort of research and exploration with completely opposite perceptions. And so it says, uh, we're getting ready for a class in a couple of weeks, but we're going to go in and explore all this and look at the, uh, you know, the different things that are there and what's, what's really important. And so I was looking at that, and, and a exploration that I've been looking at, a, uh, another approach to spiritual uh, activation, how we really engage and bring forth our, our spiritual power. Fascinating uh, and, and different approach. So I was looking at these things and thinking, well, now what is it that I could really share with you? And when I, when I was looking at this, I was sitting on a little deck behind our home. And I noticed that there was a leaf that was hanging uh, on a tree there. Now, the, the tree has like this, this string of long leaves that, that, that hold down. And this one little leaf had a little curl in it. And just the way the sunlight was coming through, it would catch that curl. And it was this exquisite little miniature moment of texture and beauty and color that was just moving there in front of me. And as I, as I looked at the, the tree it was a part of, it had this, these cascading uh, leaves and the feeling was much like something that I'd touched when I was a, a, a boy back in the Midwest. They, they, we had weeping willow trees that would be along the uh, the streams and the rivers, and they had this beautiful sense of serenity to it. Looking at that, at that, the tree and the serenity, and just beyond it were three magnificent redwood trees. Now, the, the side of the redwoods that was towards me was the, the uh, side that was in the shade, so the green in the needles was very, very dark, that deep forest green. But you know how it is with redwoods, the way that the light kind of comes through and it weaves through and it'll just touch apart and suddenly uh, the, the rich brown of the bark of the tree just seemed to, seemed to light up as I was watching. And then there's a little Japanese maple tree that sits in a container on our deck. And it was between me and the, and the redwood trees. And the sun, as it came down, was directly on that little Japanese maple. And the green of those leaves, it was like that first very light green of spring as things begin to grow. And the, the sun on it, it just made it glow 
It was like it was this vibrant, powerful, uh, amazingly young and energetic presence. And the, the branches that those little leaves were on were bright red. It's the most exquisite red. And as I looked at this beautiful place where I sat, I could feel this amazing life force that was, that was there, that was expressing as the, the greens and the trees and the light, and that created something together. And there was something greater there that I could touch, that I could feel, I could sense. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see it with my eyes. But it was there. And it was, it was so real. And it was more than simply life and the beautiful colors and the amazing chemicals that go together in the DNA that provides beautiful trees. It was much, much more than that. Because it included all the space and how it came together. And it wasn't separate from me. Because as the experience of observing, I was part of it. Now, I, I, I know when I go into prayer, I often call this the presence. And that really doesn't do it very well. But what I was sensing, and you felt it, okay, there have been times, I know, when that has been so alive for you, so alive in your life. And you've sensed that greater that was present. Not out there, but here. And suddenly I got it. The things that had engaged my mind, the questions that my mind had wanted to answer, all those thoughts from books and Years and years of exploring and learning about great spiritual teachers and wonderful paths and touching great scriptures. They are about going to an experience, but they are not the experience. to open, to experience the presence that is. This beautiful, sacred presence that we call life, that is so much more than life, that we call God, which immediately <laughs> makes us all misunderstand what we're talking about. <laughs> this I remember trying to understand it when Fillmore called it divine substance. And we've been studying from Glenda Green, they called it adamantine particles. And in physics, they're beginning to try and approach it by calling it fields of infinite potential. And nobody's even close. Okay, but you've touched it. It's the experience, it's the awareness, the presence. That is what important. It takes me back to why is it important? It's the, the teaching is 
seek ye first. And then Jesus goes on to kingdom of God and his righteousness, and right away that confuses everything. But the, the experience of this beautiful, sacred presence in which we live and move and have our beings, and that is us and expresses through us, and experiences through us, and brings greater beauty through us. So I understood what was important. And I looked at, okay, how, how did that happen for that moment? That I went from just sitting there to experiencing something so exquisite and so beautiful. And I realized part of it was I stopped and saw the beauty in that little leaf as it curled. <coughs> beauty opens us. It's part of a journey into the depth and the power of the heart. And that was, that was part of the journey that this was from all the marvelous things that my mind was exploring into the place where I could experience what the mind couldn't quite get me to. When I look at that experience, I'm reminded of a most exquisite picture now, the picture is something that comes from a uh, reading of a friend of mine. And that friend keeps me remembering what's important. Now, the friend is Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and in, in those marvelous stories, there are images that we touch that are so pure in what they, they are within us. In this experience, uh, Pooh is in this beautiful state of harmony. It's a great morning. He is walking along. He has just made up a new rhyme, and he is singing his, his rhyme to himself as he walks along. As he goes along, he sees that there's, there's a, a bank that he's going by, and that there's a hole in that bank. And it occurs to him that that must be rabbit's hole. Okay, so he, he goes over to the hole, and he calls in to see if rabbit's home, and the answer is nobody's home. And uh, so they kind of talk, and so he, he asks in the hole, well, where's rabbit? And rabbit responds, uh, oh, he's gone to see his good friend Pooh Bear. But this is me, said Bear, very much surprised. What sort of me? Pooh Bear. Are you sure? Said Rabbit, still more surprised. Quite, quite sure, said Pooh. Oh, well then, come in. <coughs> so Pooh pushed and pushed through his hole, and at last he got in. You are quite right, said Rabbit, looking at him all over. It is you. Glad to see you. Who did you think it was? Well, I can't be sure. You know how it is in the forest. One can never have just anybody coming in through his house. One has to be careful. Rabbit's such a great picture of the mind, isn't it? <laughs> you got subconscious and you got conscious, and you got to always try and figure out everything and make sure everything's okay. You have to, you, you have to be careful. Right. <laughs> what about a mouthful of something? The mind does come up with wonderful alternatives. What about a mouthful of something? Poole always liked a little something at 11 o'clock in the morning. And he was very glad to see Rabbit getting out the plates and mugs. And when Rabbit said, honey, or condensed milk with your bread, he was so excited, he said, both. And then, so as not to seem greedy, he said, but don't bother with the bread, please. <laughs> and for a long time after that, he said nothing. Until at last, humming to himself in a rather sticky voice, he got up and shook Rabbit lovingly by the paw and said that he must be going on. Must you, said Rabbit, politely. Well, said Pooh, I could stay a little longer if you... And he tried very hard to look in the direction of the larder. As a matter of fact, said Rabbit, I was just going out directly. Oh, well then, I will be going. Goodbye. 
Well, goodbye. If you're sure you can't have any more, is there more? <laughs> Rabbit took the covers off the dishes and said, no, there wasn't. I thought not, said Pooh, nodding to himself. Well, goodbye. I must go. And Pooh starts to go back out through the door. And he gets his head out and he gets his paws out and he can't get any farther. And then he discovers he can't get back in. And Rabbit, noticing that the doorway was blocked, heads out the back door and comes around to Pooh. Hello, are you stuck, he said. No, said Pooh carelessly, just resting and thinking, humming to yourself. <laughs> Anybody in your life you've ever said, do you, do you, uh, how are you doing? Are you, do you having a problem? Oh, no, I'm just resting and humming to myself. <laughs> Maybe your spouse is different than mine. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Here, give us a paw. Pooh Bear stretched out his paw, and Rabbit pulled and pulled and pulled. Ow, cried Pooh, you're hurting. The fact is, said Rabbit, you're Stuck. It all comes, said Pooh Crossley, from not having front doors big enough. It all comes, said Rabbit, sternly, from eating too much. I thought at the time, said Rabbit, well, I didn't like to say anything, that one of us was eating too much, said Rabbit, and I knew it wasn't me. <laughs> well, well, I shall go and fetch Christopher Robin. Now, Pooh is this beautiful image of the soul's journey. Entering into life, experiencing it, delighting in it, entering into the confusion of what it's all about, making the, the friendships and trying to figure out step by step what's really happening. And we already know rabbits, that beautiful mind as it flits back and forth. But Christopher Robin is the Christ self. You see... It is Christopher Robin's 100-acre wood. All of the animal there are Christopher Robin. Then Christopher the, the Christ bearer is that picture of the love and care that is this divine presence that is called so many different names through so many different traditions. Christopher Robin lived at the other end of the forest, and when he came back with Rabbit, saw the front half of Pooh, he said, silly old bear, in such a loving voice that everyone felt quite hopeful again. So they explore Pooh's stuckness, and Christopher Robin finally says, well, there's only one thing to be done. We shall have to wait for you to get Thin again. <laughs> Anybody been there? <laughs> How long does getting thin take, asked Pooh anxiously. About a week, I should think. I can't stay here for a week. You can stay there, silly old bear. It's getting you out that is so difficult. <laughs> we'll read to you, said Rabbit cheerfully. And I hope it won't snow yet. And I say, old fellow, uh, you making, uh, take a great deal of room in my house. Do you mind if I use your back legs as a towel horse? <laughs> a week, said Pooh. What about meals? I'm afraid no meals, said Christopher Robin, because of getting thinner, but we will read to you. Bear heaved a sigh and found he couldn't because he was so tightly stuck. And a tear rolled down his eye and he said, then would you read a sustaining book such as would help and comfort a wedged bear in great tightness. <laughs> so for a week, Christopher Robin read that sort of book at the north end of Pooh, and Rabbit hung his washing on the south end. <laughs> it's that exquisite moment when Christopher Robin sits down and reads to Pooh. It's that moment that is just about being with the one. Being with that presence, consciously aware 
of that relationship. It's that importance of letting ourselves consciously know that presence in our lives. There's a exquisite uh, ancient spiritual text called the Bhagavad Gita. And in this story from Hinduism, there are two great armies that assemble. And there's a valley in between these armies. Now, a young mighty warrior prince named Arjuna looks around and he asks his charioteer to take him out into the great field between these two armies. And he looks up and around at these armies. And here before him is this mighty conflict of death and loss and victory that's about to unfold. And Arjuna turns to his charioteer and his charioteer is Krishna. And Krishna is, in the, in the Hindu tradition, the uh, avatar, the uh, embodiment of the divine Godhead. And so Arjuna turns to Krishna to explore and ask of him, to help him understand what this is all about and how this that he's about to meet. All the questions that are there. Now, some of you know that we view the Bible as not really literal, but symbolic. It's no different in Hindu scripture. My guess is there was never a great battle line of two armies and some prince asked his charioteer to draw into the middle while he had a theological discussion. <laughs> Armies don't let that happen. Okay, but it's there for a purpose because it's a picture. It's a picture of in the middle of life with all that's going down, in its conflicts, in its struggles, what is important is that relationship with the divine. For the Bhagavad Gita, it's a conversation with God. It's the awareness that here is this responding to me. This of intelligence and awareness and purpose and understanding that it's there, this presence is there, right in the middle of life. Seek ye first. That's the first thing. That's the most important. Now, there's lots that is covered in that dialogue. That's second. It's not first. The knowledge supports us in our journey. It's wonderful, but it's not what's important. The relationship is what's important. It's important whether you are Hindu or you're reading Winnie the Pooh or you just find yourself in the presence of this beautiful world. Now, when I look at what, what opened that door, it was beauty. But the beauty takes us to the gratitude, to the appreciation, to the awareness of the value, of the exquisite presence and value that is there. Now, 
I realized what, what came up in me as I was watching that was, I am grateful. And, and that was interesting to me because it was different. Okay, there, there are many times in my life where in that place I have said, thank you, God, or thank you, Father. And what happened was I realized that when I've done that, sometimes I respond as I understand that to be, that, divine, that presence within. And sometimes it just confuses me and I go back to thoughts of something out there doing something. And so the response was different. I am grateful. I am grateful. Owning the gratitude. Owning our presence. One with our I am. In an experience that is gratefulness. Present in and a part of the tremendous beauty that's unfolding. I am grateful. Join me. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. grateful. That beautiful place to dwell that opens up to see the beauty. This moment You are immersed in beauty. Look around you. Wow. Magnificent spiritual beings in some of the most clever disguises in the universe. (laughs) Absolutely beautiful. and the beauty of your own being. I am. I am grateful. Not just for all that's there, but for all that's there. I am grateful. Again. I am am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. grateful. You are beautiful. And for that, I am grateful. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available here in the sanctuary and out on the patio after the service. You'll know them because they're wearing the lavender stoles. You're also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box at the front door, in the book center, or by selecting the prayer request link on our website, and we will be praying with you throughout the week. It is now time for our prosperity celebration. For love in action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and to be aware that God is the source of all our good. So let's repeat our affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. I choose my Release that go, go with the ball, this is where I'm supposed to be.
All right, and fold those beautiful beings in your heart and let's share our blessing together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. And we receive these gifts so grateful to know this source of infinite love, abundance that lifts us all to fulfill that which is upon our hearts. In its joy, amen. I invite everyone to stand and take hands and let's share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And our peace song. light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. <laughs>